my viewers. Uh, this is Salahuddin uh, with lecture number 33. Uh, the previous lecture we talked about PET and today we will talk about a most and very important topic, French Revolution. In this lecture we will uh, discuss the nature of the French Revolution, causes of the French Revolution, and then course of the French Revolution. So coming to the topic and coming to the, the first important aspect of this topic, which is the nature of the French Revolution. Uh, what were the conditions uh, prior to French Revolution in France? And when did it take place? And what were the prominent causes of the French Revolution and then the course which step by step molding into a complete a French Revolution. So uh, nature of the French Revolution was uh, like the atmosphere was somewhat like in such a situation where France was under absolute monarchy. Uh, there was a kind of uh, dictatorial monarchy in France prior to French Revolution and the clergy was all powerful and uh, and, 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 and uh, living a very luxurious life at the cost of the, 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 the French people's uh, lives. Uh, while common people, they were uh, in a kind of miserable condition, they were suffering from all kind of atrocities, both in, in political aspects, social aspects, economic aspects, and religious aspects. They were completely overwhelmed by the, the clergy uh, and the monarch of that time. Uh, definitely, the monarch was Louis the Fourteen, who was all in all. We will talk about it in in a coming uh, topic in the coming uh, uh, what it's called in the coming lecture. So, uh, uh, French was uh, France had suffered a form of government which was incompetent and aristocratic. Uh, which only clenched to the uh, to, it, to its privileges, uh, to uh, to its uh, luxurious life, rather taking care of the people's interest and taking care of the con uh, the country's interest. Uh, resultantly, when this kind of situation uh, were all were all already there. And they were, uh, with the passage of time, uh, getting a very miserable and extreme position. Like the clergy was getting more powerful, the luxuries of the clergy and the aristocrats, they, 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 they were enhancing their luxurious life. And the, uh, the aristocrats and the monarch, he was still uh, uh, further uh, exacerbating and further uh, getting strength with the passage of time. So the people on the other hand, they were in very miserable condition. They had, uh, uh, they were suppressed. They were denied all kind of rights. So resultantly, the situation had to go either way in, in a very extreme way. Uh, thus, the revolution took place in 1789. Uh, <clears throat> uh, there were three prominent slogans behind uh, the French Revolution. Uh, the first one was uh, equality. Uh, we are the powerful and the weak, the rich and the poor they must be equal so they were demanding equality in all aspects in all sphere of life 
The second was liberty and the liberty was of course social, political and economic. And the third one is fraternity. So those, uh, these three uh, slogans were behind French revolutions or were the main agents of the French revolutions. Uh, finally, as a result of the French Revolution, uh, monarchy was replaced with democracy and uh, Louis de Putin and those courtiers and the clergy, the aristocrats, they were all uh, uh, put on death and they were executed. Uh, the society was uh, also divided into, into three prominent classes. Uh, the first one was the clergy, the noble, and the common. So these three classes were there in France at that time. Uh, <clears throat> thus, uh, this was in a kind of uh, a general overview of the situation, the conditions prior to French revolutions. Now coming to the uh, causes of the French Revolution. What were the causes of the French revolutions? Revolution. Here we will talk about the uh, the political causes, economic causes, social causes, religious causes, and some other immediate causes. The first one is political causes. The in political causes we have. Uh, the arbitrary rule of the monarch uh, Louis de Putin. Uh, the government of France was highly centralized, means everything was in the hand of the monarch. Uh, he believed in the, uh, in the theory of divine right of king, the, this is my right only and I must be the king of France only. Uh, his authority was unlimited and unquestioned. Nobody could question his authority, and his words uh, were were shaping into law and to laws. And uh, whatever he would say, it should have uh, uh, it would be a kind of official decree or official command. Uh, he could appoint or dismiss any person, uh, that's why he, nobody could question his power and uh, king uh, thus used this power for his selfish motives even and for rather for the will and welfare of the people. Uh, so thus this unlimited uh, right of the king and unlimited power of the king resulted in arbitrary rule. So this was the first uh, one in political causes, the arbitrary rule. Secondly, we have the inefficient administration. The administration was inefficient and uh, the, the, the organizations of the departments was complex and their jurisdiction was not well defined. Uh, the high posts were auctioned and brought by the nobles and aristocrats. Uh, the, the men in authority were ignorant of their rights and duties. So people uh, got tired of such uh, rotten and tedious system of administration and one and wanted to get rid of it. This inefficient administration, the administration was not well defined that, that bureaucracy should do this thing or this is the limit or this is the area of bureaucracy, this is the uh, area of other civil administration and this is the area of uh, political administration and this is the area of judiciary so all these things were complex and everybody 
uh, who would seek power or would sort out power from the king, he would uh, abuse that power. And even the people who were uh, who were in power, they were unaware of their power and duties and rights. So thus, inefficient administration was another cause in the political uh, cause of the French Revolution. The third one is the maladministration of justice. The people were not provided uh, with justice. Justice could not uh, be dispensed to the people properly. And in the whole country, there were no uniform law. And at one area, at one place, there would be one kind of law for special punishment and in the other area or the other corner of the country there would be another area, uh, another law for a special, for, for particular kind of punishment, for, for particular kind of uh, crime. And even at, at the distance of few kilometers, the, 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 the law would be different from the other places. So, in, 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 in those laws were very cruel and in, 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 in injustice and in in a very severe punishment would be, uh, would be given to those people. And anybody could be imprisoned and with, with, without judicial trial and nobody could uh, you know, reach for judicial trial. Thus, the inefficient uh, or, or maladministration of justice was another potential cause of the French revolutions. Uh, the, another important thing was here is, uh, which is still uh, uh, very um, visible in the French uh, constitution, their, their laws were primarily based on the German laws or even in, in, in Roman laws and codes of conducts. Uh, and those laws uh, which were uh, prevailing uh, were written in Latin uh, words, which was beyond comprehension and understanding of the common people. This is why they would commit the crime and they had no knowledge of the punishment for the same crime. So this maladministration of uh, justice was a uh, cause of French Revolution. Then the fourth one is the uh, policy of poor centralization. Poor centralization means that everything, every spare of administration was in the hand of monarch or king. So the king uh, followed a policy of poor centralization and took the reign of entire administration in his own hands. Uh, the local and the other officers or the op uh, officers had to act according to the will of the king and uh, it led to uh, discontentment among the people because uh, uh, this poor centralization uh, was uh, definitely a kind of discouragement by the people of France. So this poor centralization created rift between the king and the officials and the lower staff also. So this policy of over centralization was another factor and then weak monarchy is the fifth uh, cause of uh, French Revolution. Uh, weak monarchy, uh, this multiplied the sufferings of the people uh, by, uh, by his, uh, by living a very luxurious life. Uh, France had, uh, had already lost her colonies in America and due to, due to her foolishness or due, due to her uh, incompetency we can say, uh, they were not interested in the administration. Even the successor of the uh, Louis the Fourteen, they were very weak and uh, powerless. Uh, they were uh, uh, they were uh, a kind of puppets in the hands of those officials. Uh, Louis the Fourteen advised uh, his uh, son not to squander or not to spend lavishly the the wealth of the country, 
and priorities in, in, in wars, but uh, lost the protein, proved a very coward and foolish and extravagant king. Uh, he did not lend his ear to the advice uh, to uh, to the advice of the of his his father Louis the Fourteenth. So thus, weak economy, uh, a weak monarchy was another factor in the uh, cause uh, causing of the French uh, Revolution. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, then we we have the weakness of Louis the uh, sixteen and fifteen, uh, who were the son uh, sons of uh, Louis the fourteen. Uh, as we already talked about, that uh, he was a puppet in the hands of uh, his officials, and he was not interested in art of uh, government uh, governing. Uh, he was arbitrary, the son of the Louis XIV, Louis XVI. He was uh, arbitrary, immoral, stupid, and coward. Uh, he was uh, uh, he was a puppet in the hands of his officials. Uh, he left the administration in the hands of those incompetent uh, officers who were selfish and do not taking care of the will and welfare of the people. So this weakness of the uh, Louis the 16 and uh, Louis the 15 and 16 are ancestors of the Louis the uh, predecessors of the uh, Lo Louis the 14. So their incompetency also uh, contributed to French Revolution. And then the uh, responsibility of Queen Maria Antoinette. Queen Maria Antoinette, uh, she was the uh, princess of uh, Louis the Fourteen. Uh, of course, she was beautiful, gracious, and very proud, and willful and impatient. Uh, she lacked uh, she lacked wisdom and power of judgment. Uh, and secondly, she dominated his uh, husband completely and interfered too much in the administration of the state of the appears or in the state of the government. Uh, her, leg, uh, her luxuries depleted the uh, treasury of the state. She was leading a very uh, luxurious life and extravagant life uh, thus uh, uh, she also contributed uh, by paving way to the French Revolution uh, basically this Maria uh, Antoinette she was the uh, daughter of the uh, Maria Theresa uh, uh, which we talked about in the previous lecture, uh, who was the uh, king of uh, uh, Austria. And Maria Theresa, she was, of course, very intelligent and very brave in, in her policies and administration in Austria. So uh, Maria uh, Antoinette, she was the daughter of the Maria Theresa. Mm. The Empress of Austria. Right. Uh, <clears throat> eighth important cause uh, in political sphere is the expensive monarchy. Uh, the palace of Louis the Putin was built at a cost of 10 crore pounds. Uh, the king regarded the national income as their personal income. The only way to collect money was to uh, tax the privileged class. Uh, the noble and clergy, they were exempted from taxes. So the expensive monarch means that they were expending, they were uh, spending their money on the luxuries of their lives. 
they were building different palaces and the, the only income of the prince was uh, collecting taxes from the privileged classes or from the poor people and of course the nobles and the clergy they were uh, they were uh, exempted from the taxes so the clergy and the nobles they would not pay any taxes though they had uh, a very huge chunk of the um, the income value uh, in their shares but they would not pay the tax uh, sometime they uh, at one time they took a step to uh, to cut the taxes and to make the situation somewhat uh, sustainable and stable but uh, when the person whose name was target T-U-R-G-O-T, -E, when he was made a finance minister, he was uh, removed when he imposed taxes on these two classes. Uh, and by these two classes, he was removed when the situation was ameliorating with the passage of time. Then uh, the absence of any representative body was another political cause. Uh, there was no representative body to make laws, to raise taxes and to express the public opinion. Uh, although there were institutions called the state general and yet it was not a representative body of the, of the people. So there was no proper system for collecting the taxes. There was no proper system for administration as we talked about that anybody who would, be, who would get the uh, they get the, the, the favor of the king by plantry or by any other mean and he would come to the power and he would be one and one and all. Thus there was no representative body and there was a complete confusion in the institutions. Uh, people could not be represented by anybody because there was monarchy and though a state general was established there uh, on the base of the people uh, France, but uh, it was also um, insufficient, uh, incompetent and insufficient for expressing the opinion of the people. Uh, state general was dominated, was uh, which was a representative body. It was also dominated by the nobles and the clergy, and they had to bear the. Um, it had not been summoned since. 1614 and uh, thus they, they would have no formal meetings to talk about the situations. So these were the political causes that we talked about. Some uh, nine causes we talked about in the political sphere. Now coming to the social causes of the revolution. Uh, the revolution was less a rebellion against despotism then uh, a rebellion against inequality. It was less a rebellion, a rebellion against despotism, uh, despotic rule, than, than a rebellion against inequality. Uh, there was a social inequality in France uh, the society in France, as we talked about earlier, that was divided into three classes. Uh, the first two classes, they, so the, the noble, the clergy, and the common. Uh, the first two classes, they enjoyed special privileges and led a very luxurious life. Uh, they were one percent of the whole population, uh, but owned around forty percent of the uh, national wealth. Uh, the third class was common, who were crushed under the feet of these two uh, classes due to imposing heavy taxes. Uh, there was a French, uh, French maxim or dictum which uh, goes as uh, the noble fight the clergy pay and the common or the people pray. So the noble fight, the clergy pay, the, cl the clergy 
bread and the common people pay. Pay means they, they are going, uh, going to pay the taxes. So thus, uh, uh, this division uh, or the stratification of the society in France become a cause of the social uh, uh, French revolution. Now we will talk about the all these three classes uh, which become a cogent ground for the French revolution. The first one was clergy. Uh, the church uh, formed at a state within a state. The church was very powerful and it had great influence on the people. Uh, one fifth of the land was the property of the church. There was inequality, favoritism and nepotism in the church. Uh, the clergy monopolized high offices in the church. Uh, the lower clergy performed spiritual duties but they were poorly fed. Uh, they, they, this lower clergy, they detested, abominated uh, the higher clergy for, for, for enormous wealth and happy life. Thus the clergy was a class who, was, uh, who completely dominated uh, the state, who completely dominated the other functional uh, organs of the state and they would live a, a luxurious life while the lower clergy they would uh, perform the ritual or religious duties and they and for that they 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 would they would pay very less amount thus some some grievances and reservation were also created in that lower clergy or lower class of the clergy uh, the noble uh, was the second class uh, they own uh, one or four percent of the land of France. They also enjoyed special rights and they had large estates and large castles. They were free from all taxes. They monopolized the higher posts and church and army. They decided the disputes among their peasants and imposed fines on them being arbitrary. They were better uh, abominated or hated by the common people. Thus, this noble people, they were also working on the line of the, uh, the clergy. They had large estates, they were living a very luxurious life, they, they were arbitrarily in power and nobody could, could question them and they were exempted from the taxes. So these four or five points can be added to these uh, noble as well as to the clergy. Now coming to the third and miserable class and, and then the third class was the common class. This common class was completely uh, dominated by the clergy and the noble. They were living a very miserable life. They, their economic, uh, the ec economic condition, they were in crunch. They were completely destroyed. The social values were completely destroyed. They had no ex freedom of expressions. They were filed under heavy taxes with, the, with, with each passing day. And they had no right to, ju uh, ju ju to judiciary. They could not seek justice. They could not re uh, receive justice from the, um, the judiciary. The administration was already uh, full of incompetent people and most importantly uh, they were reeling in the debris of high taxes. taxes. Uh, <clears throat> in this class included this, uh, the, the government servants, lawyers, teachers, writers and uh, other farmers and, and the rest of the people, except noble and clergy. 
uh, they were the pioneer of the leader of the French literary revolution and they had to work uh, they had to work to work pre on the on the land of the noble three days in a week so this was another shock to them so these were the characteristics of the commons now coming to the economic causes of the French revolution uh, this topic uh, may get a bit lengthened but it is a uh, uh, necessity to, to, to go through this topic in one go so coming to the economic uh, causes of the French Revolution, uh, the first one is heavy national debt. Uh, under influence of his queen and courtier, uh, they contributed to the contributed to the miseries of the people. Uh, the French government was heavily under debt. It was without uh, credit and treasure, and treasury was empty. Uh, Louis XVI took part in many wars. Uh, uh, the, consequently, the national debt increased. These wars took the country on the verge of bankruptcy. The national debt rose to 8 crore dollar. The economic condition grew from bad to worse and created discontentment uh, among the people. So, national debt was on increase because they were pirate, they were they were fighting for bones, they were fighting futile wars, wars the Seven Year War with England and some other wars in, in Europe at that time. So thus the national debt was uh, an increasing, uh, the treasury was almost uh, uh, depleted, they had no reserves. Thus. This was another cause which uh, which brought the economic uh, miseries to the France. So uh, rise in the national uh, debt was another cause of the French Revolution in an, an economic front. Secondly, the effective system of taxation. The noble and the clergy who were owning 40% of the resources of the entire population, they were exempted from the taxes. Uh, they were not, uh, they were exempted from the uh, taxes and in the burden of those taxes were piled on the common people who were uh, owning a very less amount of resources. Uh, the poor would pay more than rich. Uh, the government, another important uh, depictive system, uh, impact, uh, uh, point in this depictive system was that, that the government uh, sold this uh, right of collecting taxation to a private individuals or uh, to private contractors. And those contractors would call farmers. Uh, so those farmers, they were corrupt they were uh, they would never collect those money in the national pool or they would never uh, coll collect or uh, put those money on the national treasury thus those uh, the the corruption in the collect uh, collection of taxation resulted in the uh, defective system of taxation which become an uh, um, uh, important aspect of the, um, the cause of the French Revolution from an economic point of view. The fourth one is, uh, first we talked about political, then we talked about the social, then we talked about the economic and the fourth one is the, 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 the psychological causes of the French Revolution. The first one was the uh, influence of the French philosophers. Uh, those, the French philosophers awoke in the masses. Uh, they attacked the church, the crown and the old traditions. They encouraged the people to revolt against the corrupt regime and social inequality. In this regard, Montesco, Voltaire, Rousseau, uh, they were the most prominent French philosopher and writers. 
So the ideas of these people and the work of these people become uh, become famous uh, in in the masses in the people, and they were adopting those ideas, and those ideas was were were the mere reflection of the voices, the inner voices of the common people. Thus, this psychological influences ignite them, uh, provoke them on French Revolution, uh, and provoke them to take the reign in their own hands and, and take revenge and, 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 and kick out the king and the, uh, and the, and the courtier from the palace, from the palace. Thus, the influence of these writers uh, paved the way for the French Revolution. Uh, contribution of Montesco, Voltaire, and uh, Voltaire, Montesco, and Rousseau, uh, they had uh, greatly contributed to uh, French Revolution from a psychological point of view. Uh, <clears throat> then the uh, second one was the influence of the American War of Independence. American had got independence in psychological uh, uh, causes. First, we talked about the uh, ideas of the French writers. In the sick, in the second point, we can talk about the uh, we can say uh, the uh, influence of the American War of Independence. America got independence in seventeen seventy six. So those 13 colonies, they greatly encourage other people around the globe to seek independence. Thus, the, the French people on the line of the uh, American War of Independence also encourage to get rid of the king and his administration. Uh, the, the Trump of the American, uh, I encourage the French to revolt against their better rule. The French were greatly influenced by the ideas of liberty, equality, and fraternity. Uh, <clears throat> the French uh, came to know that it is difficult to put an end to despotic uh, rule without uh, uh, recourse to revolutionary method. The fifth important uh, the fifth important impact, uh, the cause of the French Revolution, we can say the severe femina, famine of 1788. In 1788, France uh, suffered from a very severe famine. Uh, the crops failed and a severe famine broke in the country. People began to die of starvation. Uh, they poor suffered, the king, his courtier, and the rich are revealed in their grand missions, the people dying of hunger, starvation. Uh, they gather in prayer, uh, they gather in Paris and from there march toward the king's palace at Versailles. The severe famine and the assets of the king and the queen marked the inception of the French Revolution which took a serious turn with the lives of the time. So simply we can say uh, the famine of uh, 1788, the crops failed to produce enough which could uh, essentially satiate the demands, the needs of the people. And once it is very famous sentence uh, that we know that uh, uh, the, the, the princes were all were asked that uh, people outside uh, from your palace or in the country, they, they are dying of hunger. Uh, she replied, why don't they eat cakes in place of breads? So this was a very famous reply of the princes. So they were that kind of an agrarent of the people outside who were suffering from miserable conditions. So the feminine, the, the famine of 1788 greatly contributed to the French Revolution. And then immediate cause, what was the immediate cause? So definitely the immediate cause was the extravagance uh, and the luxurious life of the courtier and the king. They depleted the 
treasury of the country and this financial crisis was created was created uh, like in, in uh, we can see and nowadays in Sri Lanka even when uh, the financial uh, financial crisis uh, uh, provoked the people and in this uh, 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 running away from the government and leaving the administration so same was the case in French Revolution where people outside uh, in Sri Lanka the people gather outside the parliament and in France people outside the palace they gathered there and storming the palace so this this immediate cause was uh, another important aspect uh, the cause of the French Revolution by having uh, depleting the economy by depleting the national treasury and, and uh, do not uh, uh, keeping abreast themselves from the miserable condition of the people was an immediate cause of the French Revolution. <coughs> and uh, what were the events uh, that took place in this French Revolution? We will talk about the events uh, in, in uh, in uh, of the French Revolution, so the fall of Bastille, uh, Bastille took place. Bastille was the prison where the people they were imprisoned, uh, uh, and it was uh, a very a center of tyranny uh, where people would uh, exposed to very severe punishments. And the rebel uh, killed the guards of the prison and and let loose all the prisoner. Uh, the Pala style was taken is, uh, is, is the first step toward the end of the monarchy. Then the second important event that took place was the king and queen brought to Paris. In October 1789, uh, a, a crowd of uh, women entered the royal palace and forced the king and the, uh, and the queen and their associate to accompany to the Paris. Thus they were brought to the Paris. And then work of the National Assembly, uh, 1789 to uh, 1793. National Assembly was uh, uh, envisioned uh, where the noble clergy and the uh, common, they were there in this same assembly. Uh, so the a new constitution was framed by this uh, National Assembly. Uh, the autocratic rule of the France uh, king came to an end, it laid the foundation of democratic setup. The property of the runaway clergymen and noble, nobles uh, was confiscated, and King Louis and his queen were sentenced to death. So, the, the work of the National Assembly they formed the constitution, they uh, whiffed out the aristocracy and dictatorship, the monarchy, and the property of those uh, nobles, they were auctioned and confiscated. And the fourth important event in this meantime was the reign of terror. Uh, the freedom fighters started punishing the supporters of the king. Thousands of clergymen and nobles were put to death. A reign of terror, terror prevailed in country from 1793 to 94. Uh, new constitution of France was framed and the National Assembly was, re was replaced with the directory uh, consisting of five members. So a uh, National Assembly was re uh, replaced with directory which was composed of five members and those five, five members uh, they had people from all walks from judiciary and from other walks of life. So these four important events took place in the course of French Revolution. The first one is the uh, fall of Bastille, which, which, which was a prison. Second was uh, the king and queen, they were brought to Paris. The third one is the work of the National uh, Assembly, which framed the constitution and formed a democratic set of, and like currently the prince, the prince is based on. And then the reign of terror, which prevailed where the people who were supporting the king and are either associated directly or indirectly with the aristocratic class they were put to death so this is all about the this was all about the french revolution uh, nature causes and then 
events of the French Revolution. So stay tuned and in the next lecture we will talk about the effects of the French Revolution around the globe. So thank you so much for watching the video.